Hey Robot Makers, let me show you how I set up a new MicroPython project. So I like to do things on the command line. So on the Mac, that's in the terminal. Now we've got the Z shell open here. So what I'll do normally at the start of a project is I'll go into my documents folder and I'll go into the MicroPython folder that I've got set up. So I'm inside my MicroPython folder and then I'll typically create a new directory. So I use the make directory command and I'll create the project with a snappy kind of name because this is going to end up being the, the repository name on GitHub. So once I've made that directory, I'm going to go into the directory using CD, change directory. And then once I'm in the directory, I'm then going to create a couple of files. So the first thing I do, I use the touch command and touch is a Unix command, which will just update the timestamp on the file. And if that file doesn't exist, it will create it. So it's a really nice way of creating some files. So the first one I always create is a readme.md and MD stands for markdown. Then I will create a git ignore file. So dot git ignore. And this is if we create some files that we don't want to upload to GitHub, this is a way that we can export exclude in the git ignore and then finally I'll just create a file that we'll be working on so I'll call this one snappy.py so once I've done that I'll then head over to Visual Studio and then open up that folder that we've just created so over in Visual Studio what I'll do is I'll go to open and I'll open up that folder that we've just created so I'll go to open I'll then go to documents micropython and that new folder that we just created that's called snappy project now I don't open up one of the files, I just open up that folder. And what that will do is it will put all the files that are in that folder on the left hand side. There they are, the git ignore, the readme and the snappy. So if I go into snappy, and let's just do a little hello world program there. So we shall do print hello world. And I always like to give my files a bit of a header. So I will say um, what the date is, put my name in it. And I might also just say what it is. So snappy project. Okay, so that's the file saved. And what I'll then do, I'll go over to the readme file and I'll just write some information about this. And this is in Markdown. Now, one of the things I like about Visual Studio is you've got this little magnifying glass split thing here. And what this will do is it will preview the Markdown file. So Markdown, if we use the hash command, that will make things a heading one style. So let's call this snappy project. And you can see that on the right hand side, we've now got that heading one style. Let's just write something else about the project. This is a snappy project. And that's just in regular text you can see there. So if I want an underline, I could just do three and that will do a horizontal line. So what I might want to do as well is have a heading two. So that's two hashes, heading two. Let's have a heading three and that's three hashes. So let's have a list like so. And that creates bullet points. So you can use a dash or you can use a star four, star item five. And we can also do numbered lists. But we don't have to remember what number we're up to. We just do one dot and then the items. One dot item seven, one dot item eight. And if we look over the right hand side there, we can see it's enumerated them one, two, and three, even though we've just done one, one, and one. So this is really nice and easy to create things. So some of the plugins that I have on Visual Studio, I have one for tidying up tables in Markdown. So if I'm creating a table in Markdown, I'll use the pipe symbol. I'll do column one, pipe, column two, pipe, column three, pipe, then another pipe, and then we do some underlines. And you have to remember exactly Exactly how many underlines you're doing there to make it all nice and tidy and then say in here we have some text now look at that already I'm gonna to have to go back in there and start doing some extra things to align that and some extra spaces to align that so it gets very messy if you try and do tables within markdown unless you have one of the pretty fires so let's just carry this on more text and then call three text like so now if I select all that I right click and then I do format document one of the plugins that I've got will nicely format that in markdown so it's adjusted everything correctly now the other thing that we can do we can actually make things align left or right within a particular column so we'll need another row for this let's just do a b and c and then let's highlight everything format it again now you can see there the a's are all left aligned that's by default if i go up to this header column here and instead of the very right hand side there i do a colon but can you see now that that a is right aligned and in fact if i do just format that it will move that a to the right hand side there and it's also made the column head and column it's also made the column heading right aligned as well if you want things to be centered then you use both of them so you do one on one side and a colon on the other again we can just highlight all that right click format document and that column is now center aligned 
on that column number two and you can see that the Markdown Prettifier has also updated that. So that's one of the, the extra plugins I've got installed. So what I'm going to do now is save those files and I'm going to commit them to the GitHub repository. So first of all, we'll just do it to the local Git. So if we go here to this little symbol, this is source code control and it says I currently haven't initialized the repository. So if I do initialize repository, it will then create a new hidden folder that's called .git. And what I'll do is I'm going to create a commit message. So I'm going to say initial commit and I'm going to add all those files to stage the changes. They're going to be staged, ready to be uploaded. So I'm going to press the tick button and that's going to commit them to the Git repository. Now, currently that it just sits on my machine. That isn't actually saved up to the cloud. And if we want to save our source code and share it with other people and also protect against anything happening to our, our local computer, if that died, we've got all our source code in the cloud and that's where we want it to be. So what I'm going to do now is save that uh, up to GitHub. It's very simple to do. So down here, we have this little cloud icon. I'm going to click on that and it's going to say, do you want to publish this to GitHub? So I'm going to say publish the, as a public repository so anyone can access that. And it's now publishing that with the name of the folder that we've given it. So a snappy project is what that'll be called. Now, anytime I make a change to that, in fact, if I click on that link there, opening GitHub, it's now going to open up snappy project. And you can see there, there's our readme file. So GitHub knows about readme files, it looks for them. And if it finds one, it presents it at the bottom. And we can see there we've got the three files. So if I just edit this file within GitHub, so I'm gonna make a little change to this file. And let's just say hello from GitHub. I'm just gonna commit that change down there. I'm happy with all that defaults. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna write that as another commit onto our Git repository. So you can see there, update snappy. But if I go back to Visual Studio, so I've just pressed the button there and I've brought down that new change that we made, which was the hello from GitHub. So this is one of the ways that I use GitHub just to make sure that my source code is nice and safe and I can also share it with the world. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you in Visual Studio some of the extensions that I've installed. So one of the first ones that I've installed is that Markdown Table Prettifier. And that one enables me to sort of highlight a table that's been written in Markdown and make it look pretty within the source code. Then I've got Pico Go. So I've plugged in my Raspberry Pi Pico, I can now see that it says Pico is connected there and it will also create a little Pico console and this is where I can type in things into the REPL so I can do A equals 1. Now if I want to upload a file that I've created such as this Hello World one, I just click on the upload button. That's then going to upload that file to the Raspberry Pi Pico through the USB cable. So if I now do import OS, os.list directory, we can now see that that snappy.py that we just uploaded is actually on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So some of the other extensions that I've got installed. So I have PyLance, which is one from Microsoft. So PyLance is going to check types in Python as we create variables and make sure that we use them correctly. And it'll generally make us write better code. And it says that it's based on PyWrite. So I hope you found this useful. And tomorrow we'll be looking at the new Arduino Connect which is the Nano RP2040 that runs on the same chip as the Raspberry Pi Pico. So, see you tomorrow.